Um, so let me start by reminding you uh, what we did last time, right? So well, on Monday, we defined Hagar diagrams, and then on Tuesday, we defined a chain complex from a Hagar diagram. Um, sort of the, the most robust version of this chain complex was CF minus, which is freely generated over the polynomial ring F of and U by intersection points between T alpha and T beta. And then um, the differential counts holomorphic disks from X to Y. And then we, we count how many times they hit the base point um, with, with our variable U. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is a, a compact zero-dimensional manifold. Yeah, so just counting the points. And we're doing everything um, over the field of two, uh, field of, uh, two elements, so um, we're counting by two, so I don't need to worry about signs. And then we defined this um, simpler chain complex, CF hat, where we required our disks to miss the base point. And now, if you look carefully at these two definitions, you notice that you can actually CF hat can be obtained from CF minus by setting the variable u equal to zero. And I guess taking the convention that zero to the zero is one. Right, so if you set, if you set u equal to zero, that says that any time um, NW of phi is non-zero, well, it's not gonna count. So if you set u equal to zero, it's saying don't count disks that cross the W base point. And that's exactly um, what the differential here counts. And certainly, um, on, on the, in terms of generators, so if we set u equal to zero, then you're just freely generated over the field uh, F. Right, so that, that's how these um, two chain complexes are related. And so what I want to do today is from a doubly pointed Hagar diagram, which is going to describe a knot, I want to find a chain complex associated to that. Great. So as we saw on Monday, well, you can describe a knot via a doubly pointed Hagar diagram. Right, so the Hagar diagram itself describes S3, and the two base points describe the knot. The two base points sit in the Hagar surface, and then you connect W to Z um, in the alpha handle body, missing the, missing the alpha disks, and you connect uh, Z to W um, in the beta handle body, missing the beta disks. Great, so we have this Hagar diagram for a knot. And then our goal is to build a chain complex, uh, which we'll call uh, CFK, uh, um, whose uh, chain homotopy type, so in particular, whose homology uh, is an invariant of K. Right, and um, on Monday I stated for you that any two doubly pointed Hagar diagrams for the same knot are related by a sequence of doubly pointed Hagar moves. So to show this is an invariant, you just show that the chain homotopy type is unchanged under doubly pointed Hagar moves. Um, so just like uh, the three manifold invariant, this comes in um, different flavors. And this, so the simplest flavor uh, is the hat flavor, so that's uh, HFK hat. Uh, so this is a bi-graded vector space. Uh, so we'll write it as a direct sum of its bi-graded pieces. Um, for sort of, I guess, historic reasons, the bi-gradings are often referred to by M and S. And then um, they're written like this. Wait. Um, and that's the simplest version that categorifies the Alexander polynomial. Uh, so we have the following. Theorem due to Ajval Sabo and independently uh, Jake Rasmussen, uh, which says that the Alexander polynomial is the graded Euler characteristic of knot floor homology. So uh, let me give you an example. Is this too wet? This is pretty wet. It's also wet. Um, great. So for example, uh, the knot flow homology of the left-handed trefoil 
Um, so I'll plot this for you on a pair of axes where the um, horizontal axis will be the S grading and the vertical axis will be the M grading. Uh, so this is three-dimensional. Looks like this. Great. Um, and so the graded Euler characteristic will just in each um, S grading, take the Euler characteristic and then give that a power of t to whatever S is. So here, this is going to be a t to the minus 1, since S is minus 1. This is going to be a minus 1 times t to the 0 plus t. And that's indeed the Alexander polynomial of the left-handed trefoil. What was the geometrical Oh, um, S is going to be something called the Alexander grading, which I'll, def um, I'll say what it is when I define, actually define the chain complexes. Um, sort of the short answer is that, right, so we saw on Tuesday that the, we sort of got this um, one grading from one of the base points and the other grading is going to come from the other base point, essentially. <coughs> Great. Okay. And so not only does the um, does not flow homology categorify the Alexander polynomial, but it also strengthens certain properties of the Alexander polynomial. Um, so recall. Uh, oh, so first, uh, so let's write our Alexander polynomial in the following form. Um, so, great, so, uh, we'll, um, uh, as you saw last week, the Alexander polynomial is symmetric, so you can write it in the symmetrized form like this. Uh, so let this be the uh, symmetrized Alexander polynomial. So recall, an Alexander polynomial, polynomial gives a lower bound on the genus of K. So the way I've written things, uh, the genus of K is going to be less than or equal, uh, sorry, greater than or equal to uh, the maximum S uh, such that AS is non-zero. Great, and so not floor homology improves this in the following sense. Uh, so, not for homology detects genus in the sense that the genus of K now is going to be equal to uh, the maximum S such that H of K hat and Alexander graded S is non zero. So, for example, um, so for the trefoil, we see that while well, S equals 1 is the largest Alexander grading. Um, or this group is non-zero, so the genus of the trefoil is one, which I guess we already knew. <coughs> so also recall that the Alexander polynomial obstructs fibredness in the sense that um, if a knot is fibered, the Alexander polynomial is monic. So recall if K is fibered, then, well, I guess in the way I've written the Alexander polynomial, um, it implies that uh, a sub g of k is equal to plus or minus 1. And then the upgraded version, which is due to Gagini and Ni, is that not a full homology detects fibredness. So k is fibered if and only if um, the Knopfler homology in the top Alexander grading is uh, one-dimensional. So in particular, you can see that for the trefoil over there in the top Alexander grading, um, the Knopfler homology is indeed one-dimensional, uh, so the trefoil is fibered. Um, so as a corollary of these two results, right, well, there's only one, 
uh, the, sorry, there's only two genus one fibroid knots. So in particular, it follows from these two theorems that knot flow homology detects the trefoil and the uh, figure eight. And, and, and the unknot, since the unknot is the only knot of genus one, of genus zero. So HFK hat detects the unknot, the trefoil, and the figure eight. All right. So now that I've advertised some of the properties of knot homology, uh, let's dive into the definition. Oh, yeah, and it can detect between the left-handed and, and right-handed. Um, yeah, the, the, gra the gradings uh, tell you that, yeah. Oh, that's right, it's only well-defined up to uh, plus or minus the power of t, and um, the, the gradings and knot homology are chosen, so you're always gonna recover the symmetrized Alexander polynomial. Um, yeah, it's just, it's, a, it's the grading convention, um, yeah. All right. Um, so first, let me just introduce a polynomial ring. Uh, so let's, uh, polynomial ring in two variables, u and v. This is gonna be bigraded. Um, so we'll suggestively call one of the gradings the u grading and one the v grading. And the grading of the variable u will be uh, minus two, zero. So negative two in the u grading, zero in the v grading, and the grading of v will be zero, negative two. <coughs> and then, right, so it's bi-graded, and at times it'll be, con it'll be um, useful to consider a linear combination of these gradings, which will denote by a, which will be the Alexander grading, and this is gonna be one half uh, the u grading minus the v grading. Oh, and for those of you in the audience who, have, um, who are already familiar with knot flow homology, um, the, the treatment I'm gonna give here is, is sort of notationally different than, the original, than sort of the definition in um, Oshawas and Zappos paper, but it's, uh, it's equivalent. All right. So we have a doubly pointed Hagar diagram for our knot. So we'll, have a chain complex CFK, and then um, I'll denote our ground ring as a subscript. So this is going to be freely generated over this ring I just described for you by what you're now used to, so by um, intersection points between T alpha and T beta. So now I just need to tell you what the differential is. And maybe, maybe you can already guess. Wait, so I have this differential. All right, so, well, let's just do exactly what we did on Tuesday, but except now that we have two base points, well, we have two variables, so we'll count u, we'll count, u will count how many times we cross the w base point, and v will count how many times we cross the z base point. So as before, we'll sum over uh, other generators y, uh, phi and pi two from x to y, mu of phi equals one, the number of points in this uh, zero dimensional moduli space, and then u to the nw of phi, v to the nz of phi uh, times y. All right, and then, well, Ajvath and Zaba prove that this is a differential, so that d squares to zero. The proof is essentially the same as in the three-manifold case. 
And then they also proved that the chain homotopy type of this chain complex is an invariant of K. Uh, so yes, uh, this is proved by both Oshvath and Zabo and independently Jake. So D squares to zero and the chain homotopy type in particular, the homology as an invariant of K. Odd. So let me make a few remarks about this chain complex. Right, so if you remember, <coughs> on Tuesday we defined a relative grading. And so now we'll actually have a relative by grading. So we have a relative, uh, we have relative gradients. Great, and so let me tell you how to define this relative gradient. Well, the U gradient is gonna be exactly what, you're, what we saw on Tuesday, so uh, the U gradient the relative u grading between x and y is just going to be uh, mu of phi minus 2 and w of phi. All right. And now with the v grading, just do the same thing, but instead of for the w base point, do it for the z base point. So the v grading, the relative v grading between x and y is again going to be mu of phi and now minus 2 and z of phi. Great, right. and as before, um, you can see that the you can check the differential lowers the u grading by one, and it lowers the v grading by one. Um, and so remember, we defined this Alexander grading, one half uh, u grading minus the v grading. So the differential uh, preserves the Alexander gradient. Okay, so I've defined a relative gradient. Well, it'd be nice to lift this to an absolute gradient. And so we can, in fact, do that. So remember on Tuesday, we computed uh, HF minus of S3, and we saw that it was, F, it was just a ground ring, F join U, and then we declared that one was in grading zero. That was how we normalized our gradings. And in fact, we can, we can use that um, convention to normalize these gradings. So notice, um, So what happens when we set V equal to one? Right, so, if we, okay, well, so first of all, if we set V equal to one, we have to trash the V grading because well, multiplication by one, that it can't change the grading, but multiplication by V lower the V grading by two. So uh, set V equal to one and forget the V grading. Okay. And so, well, if V is equal to one, it's like now, well, it's like forgetting the z base point, right? Because, oh, well, no matter, like, if v is equal to 1, this doesn't matter. This can be whatever you want. It's not going to change anything. So the point is that setting v equal to 1 is like forgetting the z base point. Okay. Well, if we've forgotten the z base point, well, then what we have is a singly pointed Hagar diagram for S3. So if we take the homology, well, if also if we set V equal to one, well, now we're just working over the ring F join U. <coughs> so, well, if you think about this, now this is exactly just gonna give us C of minus of S3. So the homology is gonna be HF minus of S3, um, which is F join U. So this gives C of minus of S3. So the homology of the complex so 
we set uh, v equal to 1. Well, this is just going to be isomorphic to f adjoin u, which is the um, hf minus of s3, so this is going to be in gradient 0. So you declare this homology to be in gradient 0, and that pins down the u gradient. This, so this determines the absolute u gradient. Now, if you want to determine the absolute v gradient, we'll just do the same thing, but reverse the roles of u and v. So similarly, uh, the homology of the chain complex when you set uh, u equal to 1. This is going to be isomorphic. OK, so if you set u equal to 1, now we're working over the ring f adjoin v. So this homology is going to be f adjoin v. And then declare this to be in gradient 0. And, that'll, um, and that pins down the absolute uh, V gradient. All right. So now let's compute an example. Uh, so let's consider the following doubly pointed Hagar diagram. Conveniently, it will be genus 1. So the one fold symmetric product of our Hagar surface will just be our Hagar surface. Great. And so. So T alpha is just the alpha circle. T beta is just the beta circle. So the intersection points are just these three points. All right, and so now we'll compute the differential. And so now the only difference from Tuesday is that uh, we'll count how many times you cross W with uh, the variable U, and we count how many times you cross Z with the variable V. Uh, so the boundary of A, well, we have uh, this disk right here. So that's going to give us a UB. <coughs> plus U. And the boundary of B is 0, and the boundary of C is uh, VB, um, because there's a disk that crosses the Z base point. All right. Um, so now, if we want to determine the absolute U gradient, so if we set V equal to 1, well, now our differential looks like this. And so uh, the homology. Well, now what's in the kernel, B is in the kernel, as is um, A plus UC. And now uh, the image is B. Great. So the homology is generated by A plus UC. So that means that the, um, the U grading of A plus UC uh, should be 0. So let's fill in the gratings. Great. So, um, so um, this has to be a grading homogeneous element. So that means that both A and UC are in grading 0. So the U grading of A is 0. So the U grading of UC is 0. U lowers grading by 2. So that means that C itself is in grading 2. <coughs> and then what else? We know that the differential. The differential um, lowers the grading by 1. 
So that means that the U grading of VB should be one. Uh, v does not affect the U grading, so that means the U grading of B is one. So a similar calculation, reversing the roles of uh, U and V, and you can see that, um, and you can obtain the following. And then um, I'll also put in the Alexander grading. Uh, so this is going to be minus 1, 0, and 1. Great. OK, so we've computed the differential. We've computed the gradings of everything. Um, I guess we can compute the homology now, if we'd like. Uh, so the homology. Great, so what's in the kernel? Um, B is in the kernel, as is uh, VA plus UC. And well, what's in the image? Um, both UB and VB are in the image. Uh, so the homology is um, isomorphic. So we're going to get a copy of uh, um, a ground ring generated by VA plus UC. And then plus a copy of F. Uh, generated by um, B. And then if you want to know the gradings of these things, well, B is in grading 1, 1. And then um, this is going to be in grading uh, 0, 0. So this, this grading here is the U grading comma the V grading. Any questions so far? No questions. Terrific. All right. Um, so this is the most robust version. <coughs> um, but just like for three manifolds, we had the uh, most robust version, HF minus. And then what we saw, he set u equals to 0. We got HF hat. So similarly here, well, now if we want, um, we can set u and v equal to 0, say. so. There's some other flavors. Great, so um, the bi-graded vector space that I advertised before, HFK hat, that's just the homology of, well, take this chain complex and set uh, u and v both equal to 0. And so if you think um, in terms of the differential, what is the differential counting? Well, if we set both u and v equal to 0, well, that's saying we have to miss both the w base point and the z base point. Um, great, and then this is a bi-graded vector space. Um, and the grading conventions, um, so the grading that I referred to as m, that comes from the u grading, and the grading that I referred to as s, is the Alexander grading. So let's continue this example and compute HFK hat of the left-handed trefoil. Wait, so this differential that I just started to erase. Um, so now if you want to compute, so if you want to set uh, u and v both equal to 0, well, now that means that the boundary of a is going to be 0, and the boundary of c is also going to be 0. So in particular, it tells us that HFK hat of the left-handed trefoil. Well, um, it's isomorphic to three copies of F generated by A, B, and C. Um, so generated by A, 
B and C. And so um, if we're going to view the bi grading on this chain complex as um, the U grading and the Alexander grading, um, that tells us the grading here. So in particular, um, maybe if I wanted to plot this on a pair of axes representing my bi grading, Great, so A has, so this is the U grading, and this is the Alexander grading. So A has U grading zero and Alexander grading minus one. B has U grading one and Alexander grading zero. And C has U grading two and Alexander grading one. So this matches up with the example that I put up at the beginning of today. And so you can see all the, uh, Graded Euler characteristic is T inverse minus one uh, plus T. Um, is it easy? Uh, you don't just, um, yeah, you shift the grading. Is it easy to see? It can be seen. It's maybe not, it's maybe not completely obvious. Um, actually, uh, next we're actually going to talk about what happens under um, uh, mirroring and orientation reversal. Um, but yeah, there's, there's basically just some grading shift that happens. Other questions? No? OK. Great. So, yeah. So, Right, so a natural question to ask is, well, how does this invariant behave under some familiar operations that we'd like to do on knots? Um, uh, maybe first, let's start with connected sum. Um, so there's a Kronos type formula. Oh, before this, oh, before I do this, I want to talk about one more flavor. Yeah. Um, right, so we saw that we had sort of this, this full knot floor complex that was over the ring F join UV. We saw that, well, we could set u and v equal to zero, and then we got sort of the simplest version, hfk hat. But you could also, you can sort of, since the chain homotopy type of this join uv module is an invariant, you can sort of do any like v sensible algebraic thing, and that's still going to be an invariant. So here, the algebraic thing we did was set u and v both equal to zero. But if you want to, you could like set only one of them equal to zero. Um, so that's a relatively common thing to do. So if you set, uh, v equal to zero, um, and that gives you the invariant that's called HFK minus. Uh, so this is the homology of um, uh, set V equal to zero. Um, so if you were in the um, learning seminar this morning, right, um, uh, Irving talked about HFK minus, which is the effort during U module. And then you know, there's other variants. So for example, um, in certain settings, it's convenient to set maybe uh, the product uv equal to zero, and then you get 